Delighted to be in Boulder. This is my first visit here, and I'm looking forward to getting to know the community very well over the next eight months or so that we are working on the convention planning effort. Um, as you know, as I've been introduced, I'm Leah Daughtry, and I'm blessed to serve as CEO of the Democratic National Convention Committee. And we know Boulder is a Democratic Party stronghold here in Colorado, and we're guessing, I'm guessing that we have a good core of that strength right here in this room. The convention really presents us an opportunity to highlight the importance of the West to the future of the Democratic Party and to broaden our conversation about what it means to be a big tent party. This Western convention will embody our strong belief that if Democrats stand up, show up, talk about what we believe in, and ask people for their votes, we can win everywhere. And we think we've demonstrated that, certainly with the election of Governor Ritter here in Colorado, but with Democratic governors all around the Rocky Mountain West, Wyoming, Montana, Arizona, and we think the list goes on and on and on, and we're happy to be able to highlight that in our convention here in Denver. Our aim is to be inclusive and accessible in every aspect of this event, and our goal is to bring the walls of the Pepsi Center down, and I know that makes Mr. Cronkey and his partners very nervous when I say that, but we mean that figuratively. <laughs> And I know that greening uh, environmental issues are very important to you here, and I want you to know that we've made greening a priority for us at the convention. Normally, when we talk about greening a convention, we talk about greening the four days of the convention. We make the confetti from biodegradable material, we make sure the signs and all of that are from recycled material, and we do a pretty good job with trash uh, and uh, recycling for those four days. But we, what we wanted to do this time around was make the entire convention convention planning effort, environmentally friendly, the entire year and a half of planning. And so we've done things that we've quite frankly never done before. We're in an energy efficient office building. We print on double-sided paper, which is a challenge, but we do it. <laughs> But we do it. We require that our car manufacturer provide us with hybrid fuel vehicles. We require that our bus manufacturer also give us hybrid fuel vehicles. We're doing these things because we think it's important that we put our money where our mouth is. This is a, a, a principle of the Democratic Party that we are friendly and conscious of the earth that we've been blessed to live on and that we make sure that it is going to be here for our children and our grandchildren and for generations to come. And so we think that doing being environmentally friendly just those four days is not enough, that we've got to have environmental principles incorporated into every aspect of the convention planning. <laughs> and so we're pleased to announce today uh, that we've hired Andrea Robinson to come on board as our director of greening. It's the first time that the convention has ever hired a director of greening, and she is uh, it's not her first time doing this kind of work. She specializes in greening large-scale events. And among other things, she recently managed the greening of the New York, Shanghai, and Johannesburg venues for Al Gore's Live Earth Concerts. She has also worked extensively with a variety of environmental nonprofit organizations such as the Sierra Club and Environment Colorado. This morning, Andrea met with a group of local governmental and community environmental leaders here in Boulder. And I know uh, that Boulder has a wealth of data and research to offer in the areas, areas of environmental research, renewable energy, and livable communities, and more. And we're so looking forward to learning from you and incorporating the th experience that you have had. I understand there's a there's a list there's a mistake list that we're looking forward to seeing so we don't repeat the thing we, we really want to learn from what you've already learned and you have so much to teach us and we're so looking forward to the partnership that we will have with you here today I know in my heart that in August we're going to be nominating the next president of the United States in Denver. but really what I'm excited about is raising the awareness of progressive ideas we're in the heart of progressive ideas here in Boulder, Colorado. I was joking, you can't throw a stick without hitting a Nobel Peace Prize winner in Boulder. <laughs> <laughs> so, when, so when you think about what Boulder has done and how we, and I certainly can't take credit, people out here have been leading on these issues. Sustainability, smart growth, climate change of course. and. <clears throat> When most people think about climate change across the nation, they see that polar bear on that pathetic melting ice cap. But you know what it means for us? Are we gonna have water? 
Is the ski industry going to go away in 15 years? Our economy, quality of life depend on this. This is serious business. So, and I don't think the rest of the nation realizes how much the West depends on that snowmelt for our livelihood and frankly our drinking water. So those are the issues I hope rise to the top. The, the city of Boulder, the Chamber of Commerce, the county, University of Colorado, they've all come together and are talking about ways to promote these ideas. I mean, I literally believe there's probably going to be charter buses down in Denver to bring people, uh, media, delegates up to Boulder. There's going to be tours, there's going to be seminars. We're really going to take this seriously and be organized about presenting these ideas to the, to the nation and to the world. It's an incredible opportunity. So, uh, uh, you know, we're going to nominate the next president of the United States. <laughs> We know that, but we're also going to elevate these ideas that are so important to the world, and we can be so proud of the people right here in Boulder who are really at the leading edge of making those ideas what they are today. So with that, we're going to hand it off to questions, and we look forward to trying to answer them. Hi, um, I'm Tiger Rich. Um, what events are going to be held for children and families this um, Democratic Convention? There are, during the convention, we thank you. How old are you? I'm 10 years old. Great. Will we see you next August? <laughs> uh -huh. Great. Um, during the convention week, there are any number of events that happen, starting on the Sunday before the convention starts all the way through the Thursday. And we are fortunate this time because we, we, we're coming to Denver and we haven't had a convention here in 100 years that we don't have any dele living delegates, at least I don't think so, who were at the last convention. <laughs> So we have a whole new crop of people who are, f who are excited about coming and who are bringing their families and who are bringing their children. And so there will be uh, any number of events that will happen during the week, uh, some of them formal like symposia and uh, trainings and formal activities for uh, people who are interested in the sorts of things that Alice was talking about, interested in issues and that sort of thing. But there will also be uh, the host committee in Denver's planning all kinds of activities for young people with their families to take advantage of the great outdoors, those people who like to hike and, and kayak, and I'm not an outdoor girl, but uh, <laughs> whatever there is to do, they'll be, they're planning that, all that stuff. So if you like the, and I can tell you about shopping and the circus and, and the zoo and that sort of thing, and, and we'll have those sorts of activities. I'm bringing my nephews, my nephews are, uh, at that time, there'll be one year, four years, and 16. So I need lots of activities f to make sure that they're occupied during the day. So I make you a promise that we're going to have stuff for young people. Because just if, if for no other reason, so I can have my nephews occupied. <laughs> And I know the, the committee was really open to creating volunteer positions where a mom or dad and a child can do them together. Because lots of people want their kids to volunteer, but you're not going to send them down to Denver that by themselves. I wouldn't do that to Denver with my two teenagers. <laughs> so, but there'll be lots of pairings, I hope, um, and, and for kids your age or older. And when I was 10, I sent a $10 bill to George McGovern and got a handwritten note back from him, and that was my very first wow. political activism. And, and you'll remember this day as your first political activism, so thanks for standing up and asking the question. Good afternoon, Ms. Daughtry. My name is Anthony Graves. First of all, welcome to Colorado. We're so thrilled to have uh, the you. DNC coming here. I have a question specifically about how we're going to bring down the walls. Uh, specifically, are we going to be using bloggers and other means of communication to disseminate info about the convention and to really bolster our influence here? Thank you for your question. Absolutely. In, in 2004, we had 30 bloggers uh, credentialed for the convention. And obviously, in just this short space of time, the blogging world has completely exploded and become uh, the new medium for getting information out. And we recognize that uh, the blogger community particularly are po politically active, politically aware, and they keep up with what's going on. And it will help us, in engaging that community will help us to get our message out, the democratic message out to people who care and who vote and who are politically active. So we're doing a number of things. One, we have uh, actively engaged the blogging community in uh, the plan planning of the convention. We had representatives from the community at our media walkthrough a couple of weeks ago, and we've uh, formalized the process for credentialing them as part of the folks who will be covering the convention. And we also uh, are, are doing something new this time. We're creating a state blogger core 
where every state and territory will have a, a someone from the blogging community represented who will blog for that state uh, as part of the credentialed media. So that's 56 uh, states and territories that will be formally credentialed as blogger state. I think it's called the state blogger core. And that's in addition to other media who apply for credentials through the normal process. So we hope that by uh, including them in a very proactive, formal, formalized way, we'll be able to ensure that the democratic messages that are being uh, talked about that week and the nominee's message will be able to be disseminated, disseminated to a wider range of people than ever before.